The scripture reading today is Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Question about taxes. Then the Pharisees met together to find a way to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples along with the supporters of Herod to him. Teacher, they said, we know that you are genuine and that you teach God's way as it really is. We know that you are not swayed by people's opinions because you do not show favoritism. So tell us what you think. Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Knowing their evil motives, Jesus replied, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used to pay the taxes. And they brought him a denarian. Whose image and inscription is this? He asked. Caesar's, they replied. Then he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were astonished, and they departed. I am very excited for this new worship series. Today starts our journey through It's a Wonderful Life. This worship series is based on the classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life. I'm sure that many of you have seen this film or even cherish it as a favorite. I encourage you this week to watch the movie. If you don't own the film, you can rent it from Amazon, or better yet, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can watch it for free as part of your membership, or you can also rent it from Google Play. I have to admit that the first time that I watched this film, it was last year around Christmas time, and I didn't particularly care for it. <laughs> I think that I must have been been like a Scrooge when I watched it last year because I watched it again this week and I absolutely loved the movie and I loved all of the deep messages that are taught in this film. It's going to be an exciting series as we learn from George Bailey and Mr. Potter and the rest of the gang and I'm sure you all are very aware from you can see in our worship today that we have a stewardship moment. Thank you, Nancy, for that. This series is our stewardship worship series. And I'm fully aware that some of you might have just grunted with disapproval because, well, the church is talking about money again. But stewardship and being a faithful steward is about so much more than money. Yes, money is a part of stewardship, but there's so much more. You heard Nancy talk today about volunteering and why she loves to give her time to this church family. That's part of stewardship. Our membership vows remind us that being a faithful steward means that we faithfully participate in the church community by our prayers and our presence and our gifts, which include our talents and our finances, by our service and our witness. We are called to be faithful stewards in all the ways of stewardship. It's how we live out our faith of what we believe as Christians. And during this series, you will get to hear from several of our church family members on why they choose to practice their faithful stewardship as part of Applewood Valley United Methodist Church. I'm so grateful to be leading this amazing church family. And to answer the question, those of you that are wondering right now before I dive into this sermon, yes, we will be asking you to fill out a 2021 pledge card. What's a 2021 pledge card? Well, a 2021 pledge card is you making a commitment to this church family for the year of 2021. One of the questions on the pledge card is, will you support Applewood Valley United Methodist Church with your time and your prayers. Stewardship. Will you pledge a financial gift to the church for the year 2021? Stewardship. Our pledge cards are our commitment to being faithful stewards of AVUMC, and you are invited to be a part of the commitment. We have a couple of ways that you can fill out your 2021 pledge card. 
Under this video in the description box is a link to an online form where you can submit your 2021 pledge. And this week, if you are on our email or our mailing list, you will receive an email or in your physical mailbox, you'll receive an online pledge card in your email, and then in your mailboxes, you'll receive a letter and a physical pledge card. We know that some of you will want to fill out the paper with a pen instead of doing an online form, and we just ask that you mail that back to the church once you have it filled out. We will be collecting our 2021 pledge forms either online or via mail now until November 22nd. We thank you, for, we thank you in advance for your commitment to our church family for committing to what God's going to be up to in 2021. Now, in the opening scenes of the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, we hear several prayers being lifted up for George Bailey. And then we hear God and Joseph and Clarence the angel speaking up in heaven about George Bailey. We hear God say, there's a man down on earth that needs our help. Is he sick? Clarence the angel asks. No worse. He's discouraged, says God. George Bailey has a long and hard relationship with money, and this movie takes us through his life and these issues. Much like George Bailey, we all have a relationship with money that has a history as long as our lives, but also as expansive as the family systems and culture of which we are a part of. And this relationship with money and stewardship is not a new thing for us to be talking about. Our scripture for today also deals with some money issues. In our gospel reading from Matthew today, we hear a part of Jesus' life that is pretty tense. Earlier in the book of Matthew, Jesus had just entered Jerusalem and had been greeted by admiring crowds. And then he enters the temple, and in rage, Jesus overthrows the tables of money changers. He, in this moment, is challenging both the political and religious powers of the day. And because of Jesus' act in the temple, now we have two groups that normally would not work together, the Herodians and which are in power because of the Roman occupiers, and then the Pharisees, who are aligned more closely with the occupied and the oppressed commoners. These two groups declare a temporary truce in order to try to trap Jesus. They pose the question to Jesus, Teacher, we know that you are genuine and that you teach God's way as it really is. We know that you are not swayed by people's opinions because you don't show favoritism. So tell us, what do you think? Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now this was a trap. Because if Jesus answered in agreement, the admiring crowds listening to Jesus' word would probably dissipate. And if he disagreed with the question, then he would have put himself in a bad position against the Romans. And for a little background given to me by Reverend Los, it's not simply taxes that are up for debate with this question, but one particular tax. So Jews in the first century Palestine paid a lot of taxes, customs taxes, land taxes, temple taxes, and the tax that we're talking about from our scripture today was the imperial tax. This tax paid as tribute to Rome to support the Roman occupation of Israel. Yes, you heard that right. The first century Jews were required, required to pay their oppressors each year to support their own oppression. Wow. So Jesus recognizing the trap first responds with a couple of questions the first is rhetorical why do you test me you hypocrites show me the coin used to pay the tax whose image and inscription is this jesus asked 
They replied, Caesar's. Now, their answer was a confession of Caesar's divinity, which means that any Jew holding the coin was breaking the first two commandments. And so then Jesus leaves them with this. Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Now that's a mic drop if I've ever heard a mic drop. And this statement Jesus made has continued to challenge those of us that hear it throughout the ages. What continues to echo from Jesus' statement is not whose image is on the coin, but rather whose image is on us. In the beginning of our Bible, we read out of Genesis that God made us in God's own image. And for some reason, when we talk about money or politics, that can easily get lost. Yes, while we all feel very strongly about our own political loyalties, whether we're Democrat or Republican or Independent, we at our very core, however, are God's beloved. And we may feel that how we spend our money is no one else's business. But if we forget that we are made in God's image, we can easily take way to the temptation to believe that we are no more than the total of our earthly possessions or that our bank accounts tell us our worth and our value. I invite you to look back this week. Look back to see what you were taught about money. What did your upbringing teach you about money? What have you retained from that upbringing? Do you have a fear of the future or fear of not having enough? Are you like George Bailey and maybe a martyr, resentful, self-sacrificing, and long-suffering? Maybe you're like Uncle Billy, innocent. His approach to money is like the ostrich with its head in the sand. He seems happy-go-lucky on the outside, but is really a little fearful and anxious on the inside. Maybe you have a very focused energy about money, and you are decisive and get things done like Sam in our movie. Whatever and however you feel about money, I invite you to look back this week. See what maybe was learned behavior and why you have the relationship with money that you do. Like George Bailey, we sometimes need some help in the midst of the discouragement that can come with our fear about money. We look back this week with a practice of compassion for ourselves and others and a faith that reminds us of our true worth. In our scripture today, Jesus raises an important question and challenges us to always remember whose we are and whose image we are made in. Yes, there are elements in our lives that are part of our society and systems and world order, like the Jews paying taxes to Caesar. But those are just elements We have to remember that on the deepest level of who we are, we are gods. And remembering this deepest part of our identity, children of God, will help shape our behavior and encourage us to be the people we have been called to be, to be the faithful stewards that God has called us to be, no matter what our relationship is to the elements of our world order. Applewood Valley United Methodist Church has been a church that has been encouraging people to be who they have been called to be since 1957. This church family prays with one another, is present with one another, serves with one another, gives support to each other. This church family is special. And I know that I am new, but the warmth and love I have received as your new pastor has been so appreciated. You all are making me a better person and helping me live into the person I was called to be. And as such, this community is helping every single one of us 
be the people we are called to be. I invite you to envision with me our future, our future of continuing to share the life, love, and laughter of Jesus Christ, our future of continuing to share God's unconditional love with the world, our future that includes you. Our church family would not be the same without you in it. So throughout the next several weeks, we will be recognizing that as we journey with George Bailey, as he comes to understand how different the world would be without him in it. We need you in our church family to help us all continue to live the best lives that God has called us to. Thank you for being a part of this family, and thank you for your continued faithful stewardship. Amen.